My life was a simple one. I was a sophomore studying computer science and I lived alone in an apartment that wasn't far from school. I was a straight A student and the other students looked up to me. My best friend Kate was the only person I hung out with. My life was simple, at least to people who didn't know my secret. I was a hacker, a professional one, and I was making a lot of money duping people on the dark web. Using a complex algorithm, I had managed to set up some sites that asked for personal information. Once a person put in their email, I could hack their device location and tell them exactly where they were. Most people hated the lack of privacy, so I always put up a second option. All they had to do was unsubscribe from the mailer list. Once they clicked on that, they would be notified that their device was being corrupted with a virus and that they had to buy an antivirus. Three out of five people caved in and sent the money making me richer. The money was sent to an online mobile money app that couldn't be traced back to me. I was living a good life and was taking good care of myself. My laptop lit up with a message and I smiled, eager to have more money. I sent in the usual message informing the person of their location. I frowned, the person wasn't living very far from me. I shrugged and sent in the second option. The user accepted to receive the code and I sent it and waited for it to be sent back. After the usual message of the virus, the person went silent. That meant the user didn't fall for it. I was still staring at my laptop when my phone lit up with a message. I hurried to it thinking it was Kate. It was an unknown number and the message read, who the hell do you think you are? I sent back a reply asking who it was. I know what you're doing on the dark web. A chill passed through me and my hands started to shake. How was this possible? What do you want? I texted back. Money. I was being blackmailed and there was nothing I could do about it. I gritted my teeth as I accepted the offer. I sent the money and hoped that that would be the end of it. I decided to quit my dark web scamming and just focus on school. After all, I had more than enough money to survive. Being caught took away the thrill. The next week, I woke up to a message from the person who blackmailed me asking for more money. I replied in the negative. Your name is Laura. You're in your second year and you live close to the university. I screamed in anger, wondering how the person knew so much. I didn't even know if it was a guy or a girl. I sent the money reluctantly. I didn't want my secret out in the open. The next day, the same message came in. This time, I flat out ignored it. I was nobody's bank. I refused to reply and hopefully the person would get the hint and leave me alone. A knock on my front door made me jump. I crept slowly and peeked through the peephole. I sighed in relief, it was just Kate. I opened the door for her, glad to see a familiar face. I hugged her and invited her in. She held her phone up and said, you really thought no one would find out. What's that? I came closer to her phone and I saw a message, the same message I had just received a while ago. Kate was the person blackmailing me. Kate, how could you? She rolled her eyes and demanded that I give her a thousand dollars if I wanted her to keep her mouth shut. I shook my head firmly. No way, I was so angry. I thought she was my friend. Even if she had found out about it, she could have just asked me. Get out, I pointed to the door. Not until you give me my money, I'll scream. I laughed, mirthless, and told her to get out. She opened her mouth and started to scream. I jumped on her, covering her mouth. We both fell down. I was on top of her, my hands still over her mouth. Her blue eyes were wide as she buckled underneath me. I pressed down on her even harder. Her hand came up, slapping me in the face, hitting my chest, but I refused to move. I had some extra pounds on her and I was using it to my advantage. Her hands reached up and grabbed my neck. She squeezed, cutting off my air. I had to release her mouth to tug her hands off me. I gasped when I managed to pry her hands off. Kate pushed me up and rolled over till she was on top of me. I was still trying to get enough air in. She punched me and my eyes watered. I struggled under her, but she wouldn't budge. She punched me again and I got enraged. I pushed her with my hands and she tumbled back. I ran to my kitchen and I pulled out a knife. I turned back to her, motioning to the door with the knife. We were both panting heavily and I told her to leave my house and she looked at me with hatred in her eyes. Kate didn't move from her spot and I started to wonder why she was so particular about getting the money. I walked slowly to get with the knife outstretched and I told her to leave if she didn't want to get hurt. When she realized that my threat was real, she made her way to the front door and let herself out without glancing back. I let the knife clatter to the floor and held my head in my hands. 
I was about to stab my best friend. What kind of person was I? For the next few days, I didn't leave my apartment. I spent my time staring at nothing. My confrontation with Kate kept flashing through my mind. My phone rang and I picked it up without looking at who was calling. I sat up suddenly. No, she can't be dead, no. I dressed up hurriedly and I rushed out. I felt really numb as I hailed a cab to Kate's dorm. A crowd was gathered in front and my heart sank. Just as I got to them, I saw a stretcher being wheeled through the crowd. Kate was on it and her wrist had been slashed. I fell to the ground, my legs had turned to jelly. Kate killed herself. I later got to find out that she had a brain tumor and was supposed to go to surgery but couldn't because she didn't have enough money. I blamed her death on myself and it was a scar I knew that I would carry for a long time. Mega giveaway announcement. Watch the next story till the end and answer a simple question. One lucky subscriber stands a chance to win an Amazon gift card worth $100 every week. I've only had one girlfriend in my entire life, and I was as surprised as I could be when it happened. And you may wonder why. Well, I am and have always been a nerd. I've always been a fan of anime, video games, board games, and basically everything that would keep me inside the house and not force me to interact with other people. And when it comes to friends, well, I never had one. Even my parents were worried about me the majority of my childhood. They would look out the window and see all the neighborhood kids playing, running around, and laughing while their little Jeremy was inside, cooped up in his room, watching cartoons, and not getting a bit of sunlight. But they eventually came to terms with my behavior. Anyways, fast forward. I'm now a freelancer. I made one friend in the meantime, although it was from an online game I played. But we really got along, having the same hobbies, and we would talk daily. In my opinion, that is a friend. I work from home, maintaining the same distance from other people as I did when I was a kid. I'm a programmer, duh, and I always design websites, but not as often. But let's go on with the story. At the time, I was a regular on the dark web. I never bought any items or anything from there. I just browsed around to pass the time. And since I was doing nothing wrong, just window shopping, I didn't think that my privacy and my personal data were at risk. I had to go outside and take my clothes to the dry cleaner. I got into my car and started driving. At the red light, as I was looking around the car for my phone, which I would lose on a daily basis, I felt the car moving from side to side. What the hell? I said, before I took my head from under the dashboard. To my surprise, I saw a girl laying on the hood of my car. I immediately put on the emergency brake and got out of the car. Hey, are you okay? I said. Um? Do you need some help? I asked her again, taking a step towards her. I'm fine. Sorry about that. I was looking at my phone and I guess I didn't see your car. As I saw her face, I was mesmerized. She was the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Bright blue eyes, freckles all over her nose and cheeks, and a crooked smile which made my legs melt. Uh, are you sure you're okay? I asked again while I was getting lost in her eyes. Yes, yes. Thank you for your concern. She responded while smiling at me and tucking her hair behind her left ear. That was it. That was true love. In my opinion, after all. I forgot all about my social anxiety. I forgot all about the clothes. I asked her if she was free for coffee and she said yes. That afternoon, I had the best time of my life. Like me, she was kind of nerdy herself, being a fan of the same anime I would watch. Also, I found out that she loved animals and would frequently volunteer at the local shelter. Oh, and another thing I found out about her. Her parents died when she was little. And by putting the pieces together, I realized that the incident scarred her even to this day. She was very emotional. When the waiter brought her the wrong cup of coffee, she didn't want to change the order. She wanted a cappuccino, and he brought her a tall Americano. As I politely asked him to bring her a cappuccino, she felt so embarrassed. She almost crawled under the table. I don't want him to get in trouble. God, I hope he doesn't get fired over this. She said while putting her face in her palms. 
Don't worry, I said laughing. It's just a mistake. Nobody's in trouble. I tried to comfort her. She was very emotional, to the point that every little thing would send her spiraling into a small form of depression. As the relationship went on, being about a couple of weeks in, one evening, I asked her something that I never thought I would through text messages. Hey, I really miss you, I said. I miss you too, so much, she replied. This is how the conversation started. Anyway, I won't go into the specifics, but the bottom line was that one day, I asked her for nudes. I thought she had an amazing body, and as her boyfriend, well, I didn't think I did anything wrong. She was reluctant, but eventually, she did send me about four pictures. Fast forward a couple of days, and everything was normal. She slept over the past two nights, and we had a romantic dinner. I tried to cook for her, but I ended up burning the chicken, so I just ordered Chinese and we watched our favorite anime. It was so nice. I didn't want it to end. After she left, I went online to play a multiplayer game that I was passionate about. You know that friend that I told you about? He was online too. What's up, Jeremy? He asked. Is everything okay? I barely had time to log in, and he already asked this question. I didn't know what was going on. Um, yeah, I guess. Everything's fine. Why? I asked him. I know you don't do it on the dark web anymore, but I do, and I saw some pictures of your girl there. What? What pictures? I asked him, not knowing what he was on about. It turned out that the pictures that she sent me were all over the dark web and gaining a whole lot of traction. I panicked. I hoped that she wouldn't see them. I logged off the game and started to use my programming knowledge to see what was going on. It turned out that my computer was hacked and it was so advanced that none of my software detected it. Oh my god, this is bad, I said to myself. I was terrified. I knew that she was into computers too, and if by any chance she would see the photos, she would blame it on me. The next thing I did was to try and find the hacker. I was kind of a pro myself and managed to track the guy down. After trying something for the entirety of the night, I managed to hack into his computer. But when I tried to delete the photos from his hard drive and from the accounts he had where he posted them online, I was greeted with a message. Really? Do you think I'm this stupid? Don't stress, you can have the photos. I know who you are, Jeremy. When I read my name, I froze. But the message wasn't over. I know you're pretty good with computers, and I will need you one day. Tell you what, I'll take down the photos if you're willing to do a favor for me sometime in the future. Tell me your response in the chat box. I didn't know what he meant, but I was so desperate that I agreed. Fine, just take them down, I wrote. Immediately, the photos were deleted from the dark web. Then, I received the last text from him. Good, talk to you in the future. My girlfriend was finally out of harm's way, but I still had a debt to pay to this man. I didn't know what, I didn't know when. All I knew was that he owned me. Even to this day, I haven't received any instructions from him, and I hope I never do. Time for the mega giveaway question. What do you think happened with Jeremy thereafter? Let me know in the comment section below, and do hit the subscribe button. One awesome subscriber with the most creative comment will win an Amazon gift card worth $100 every week.